Hey traders, it's Josh. It's Friday, March 3rd, and I'm going to do the wrap up for today. I uh, got some good feedback from the video yesterday. A couple complaints, you know, a few people said, um, too much, and that I should rehearse it. This is off the cuff, this is live, and I'm not going to rehearse this kind of stuff, so let's get right into it. SPY right now. See this resistance? Talked about this yesterday. We didn't get a breakout, so what do you do? If you're an option seller, you look at the weeklies, especially this week, you look to sell those. Uh, calls or even the puts on there. Your premium seller for today, uh, as the premium, especially late day on the weeklies, comes out. So as of right now, we continue to trade in this range. Volume on the red days continue to be greater than the days on we go higher. So something to be concerned about. Uh, we could be seeing a move a little bit lower. One I want to look at here is USO. Can't see all the way back here of my chart, but this yellow line is resistance. It's a big base that's been going on for two years now. I was looking to short this today, but we got a peak right above here. It could be a long here, again, and on a weekly basis, which is a stronger chart than what I'm looking at here on a daily. So oil continues to be strong here, continues to defy gravity, and after this big base that's been building here for two years, we could see it start peaking back up here and oil start to run. Dollar has been getting hit hard and it's really right on the verge of breaking 52 week lows which is gonna could spark a new rally in oil which ties together which goes hand in hand so keep an eye on that. A few names that saw some call activity today. I'll look at the charts here. F-U-Q-I and this one has been pretty weak. We notice here the 20-day moving average has been resistance all the way down here. We got a pop up today. I'm not quite sure why we got the pop, but we did. It's breaking above the 20-day moving average here. And call activity picked up here. I'm going to have to move the chart here because of the screen. Um, <laughs> like I said, off the cuff. Uh, call, pick, call activity picked up here on, on the March uh, 1... I'm not even looking at the right strike. <laughs> EXK. That's the next one. F U Q I. So activity picked up here in the March 5s, the April 5s, the April 6s, and even some action in the June 7s. And there were actually buyers coming in at that strike. I can confirm that. And let's just take a look at the ones that would be more interesting with more days to expire 42 days. The April's, April 6 calls were active. Um, actually, just the March 5s or the April 5s I could see right now. 65 cents as the top buyer of 170 lots right here on the uh, April 5s. So that's one to keep an eye out for. EXK is one that's interesting here. Been continually seeing call activity the last few days. April 10s are seeing action here and buyers were coming in on this one. Just give me a second to look at my notes here. Buyers were coming into the April 10s at 50 cents and there's even some August activity here as well where some buyers were coming into the August 10s and this one has been very strong as well. Let's take a look at the chart here on this one. And I had talked about this one before when we had seen the call activity. It broke out here and had paused and now it's continuing to uh, trade higher here. 10 is going to be an uh, automatic resistance level because it's a psych level. So we get to uh, see a level into 10. You might see that back off a little bit with the August call buying. That's where you're going to see that blueprint of over time that they're looking for prices to continue higher here. Uh, looking at one that as well that has been pretty weak has been GS. And I'm just going to wrap it up with this one with put activity. This one's been pretty weak. We haven't heard too much about it. And I was looking at this one today and I was thinking, wow, it's been pretty, it's been pretty lame. We haven't had, we haven't seen too much going on with GS. Uh, but one trade that actually came through today was a, uh, uh, the top trade in this, or in the, in the contracts that traded all the contracts was a uh, April 160 put buyer of 1000 at the force at $4.70 asking price. Um, also there was a bullish risk reversal that traded in July, but I would I think that traded with stocks. So I would keep an eye on this one as well and I don't necessarily think this is a, a, a bearish um, bet on this one. I look for this one to come back into this lateral support at 160 and since it's been so quiet lately you know, you potentially see a bounce off this 160 coming back into this level here. But we notice that we are under the 50-day moving average. We are also the 20-day moving average. We do have a, de uh, a descending trend line here as well. 
And taking a look at, I talked about Morgan Stanley in the chat room today. Uh, Morgan Stanley was one that um, was one I was watching that was really strong. It's starting to roll over now and came back to this level here. It started to break through and just as I look at it right now, it's held that support level. So this is where I would look at this as a bounce play. We saw that buyers held this level here and I would look to see that this one bounce off. The stop would be at this day low here at 28 and that's where you get out because it's going to start rolling over here because uh, it could pull all the way back to 27.50. That's not what you want to play. You just want to wait for it to start to turn and you want to play that turn. Unless you're short and you want to look to short it, you short the bounces on this one as well. One that we had really uh, an awesome trade was on NGD, was in the chat room. This is a trade alert that we posted today. I think this one gets going. It's broken 10 and it's going to continue to trade here. This is play on gold. You got a nice inverse head and shoulders here. Wow. Shoulder. Shoulder. Breakout. And this one had, was a play into earnings that we had. We took half off today for a nice uh, profit. Those that want to learn about losers, play to trade into Marvell. Marvell, we I picked up uh, activity. Looked like there's uh, put sellers in there, and the 20, last 22 days there's a, uh, a pretty bullish bias in options. Didn't work out that way. It was a calendar spread. It's a losing trade. Stuff happens. Have more winners than losers. That's how, that's how it works. So that's going to wrap it up here. I will talk to everyone next week. Keep having the comments come in, please. Comments keep coming them in because this will continue to work more if I can get the feedback and understand what everyone wants to hear, see, and look at. Take care.